Hi, in this video, we're going to be talking about land locomotion. The video will be broken up into four main parts. The first part will be about running, walking, terrestrial locomotion. The second part will be about jumping locomotion. The third about burrowing. And the last and fourth part about current bioinspiration. Part one, running, walking, terrestrial locomotion. Insects have a very unique way of moving across land. The most common method would be walking or running to wherever the insect needs to go. Humans are bipedal beings, which means that we have two legs and we're rather unstable when we're running or walking. Insects and hexapods have a major advantage over humans because they have six legs. So when they run or walk somewhere, they have three feet on the ground most of the time, which makes them very, very stable when they're on the move. Take, for example, the cockroach. It is a very, very skilled runner. Not only are they fast, but they can also walk and run across a variety of surfaces. In addition, the cockroach is able to climb a variety of surfaces, and it does this by using both hooks and sticky pads found at the end of an, the insect's tarsus, or also known as their foot. Cockroaches have a relatively large functional foot. They do not seem to care if they hit the surface in just the right place using their foot or if they use their whole leg because the whole leg can actually serve as a foot if the more distal section of the foot misses the surface. Cockroaches have spines on their legs that help catch the legs on uneven surfaces. These spines are ratcheted, which means that they bend in only one direction, and it does not bend in any other direction. This helps the leg catch hold of any uneven surfaces. Take a moment and pause this video and observe the different types of roaches in front of you. Can you see that when the roach walks across the surface that it's using a tripod movement? Can you see the spines on the legs of the roaches? Now, Take a look at the hexabots in front of you. Take one of the hexabots without boots and place it on the wire surface. Pause this video and using the controller, try having the robot move across the wire mesh. Start the video again once you're done. So, what happened? Did the, how far did the robot go? Now, take the robot and choose one of the different boot options. Which boot did you think would work best moving across the wired surface? Pause the video again and using the controller, try having the robot move across the wire mesh with the boots on. Start the video again once you're done. So what happened? Did you pick the right type of boots? How far did the robot go? All right, now take the robot and consider which boot would be best for getting across an uneven surface like a carpet. Repeat this exercise and observe what happens. Start the video again once you've done repeating the exercise. Hopefully you've observed in the first exercise that the robot had a hard time moving across the wire mesh. And in the second exercise, you pick the boots with the spines because the spines help the robot gain a better foothold when moving across the wire mesh. In the third exercise, you should have observed that using the boots with the wider uh, distal end helped it move more easily across the carpet and stopped it from sinking into the carpet. Since cockroaches do not readily live in habitats with, with such strange surfaces, they don't have evolved legs that have a wide base at the distal end of the foot. But, but if we wanted to create a robot the size of an insect to roam through buildings that may have carpet, having a wider distal end would help the insect robot move across the carpet surfaces.